I gave a speech on Wednesday and the first thing that the people who thanked me afterwards said was, we were very glad they turned off the microphone just after you started speaking. <laughs> um, so I won't stand in front of the microphone today. Um, I'll talk from over here and wander back and forth. Now, um, as Pia said, I work in Ingenio. Um, if by chance you happen to be a journalist here today and you were thinking about quoting what I was saying, you would say that John Sheridan speaking is in his professional and not official capacity. Um, spoke about things today. Um, I'm talking about are we engaged yet and the subject that I'm drawing my title from is of course the Engage 2.0 report or the Engage report, the report of the Government 2.0 task force that the Government responded to in its work um, over the last um, two years. The task force was kicked off in June 2009, reported in December 2009. The Government's response um, began or was published in early 2010, about March, I think, um, and we've moved on a May. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Um, May um, 2010, and we've moved on since then. I'm going to talk about where we've gone and where we are um, today as a consequence of that. This is my first um, uh, shot at an infographic. Um, it was much harder than I thought, um, and I would um, congratulate those graphic designers and things like that who do this for a job because I found it quite challenging um, as I was working through. Um, I'm going to publish the, uh, the slides will be up on GMO's website, um, and I'll probably, if I can make it a decent picture, and not by, by me, I mean Mark, um, can make it a decent picture, um, we'll probably um, put that up somewhere as well. Um, what are some of the interesting things? Um, we've got 34 um, live websites or um, pages on, on govspace.gov.au. I think we're engaging some 28 agencies. We've got about 20 pages or, or sites um, in production at the moment, not, or sorry, in development at the moment, not quite in production. There are over 700 data sets on data.gov.au. The majority of those are in CSV or XLS. Um, I had a quick look before to see if there were very many anything else and most of them are in, in that sort of file arrangement. Um, I saw something on, and some of you might know, the Riot Act site the other day and there was discussion of ACT, the ACT government's virtual community cabinet which I thought was um, interesting and an interesting innovation in itself. Um, one of the things that appeared on this Riot Act discussion was the sort of why would anybody bother doing anything on Twitter. Um, and what's interesting about that, I think, is that if you work out the numbers, three and a half electoral quotas in Canberra represent the number of Twitter users that are in Canberra. And if you don't believe that, um, all you need to do is go on the Riot Act site and work out, uh, go through my maths, or I drew them from ABS figures, from the census, social media survey and a range of other areas um, and I worked it through, um, not particularly in a complicated fashion, there are some approximations but I think you'll see that that means in the ACT Twitter could be quite an important thing. Um, one of the really um, interesting um, things that, we, that government is doing on social media at the moment um, is being done in DIAC. Um, the Immigration TV, IMI TV channel on YouTube I couldn't recommend that to you more. Um, if you want to just look on one YouTube video that's, do, that's about that, I would recommend um, A Farmer Wants a Life. Um, have a look at that and I think you'll be um, amazed at the powerfulness of um, the message that can be put across on YouTube. So we, there's some really interesting things um, going on there. On our own blog, um, this has been a, a very interesting arrangement. When I first um, put to the, the then Secretary of Finance that we would have a blog. Um, so it, I don't know how many of you are actually public servants, but probably a lot. But even even as a um, first Assistant Secretary, when you run your own idea up to the um, the Secretary and sit down in the office and he says, "Well, John, these are the list of things that I think are going to go wrong," and he sort of reels off all the things that you said. He said, "But you know that, that's okay. Um, I'm quite prepared for you to go ahead with it." But just remember, you're the one who's responsible if it goes wrong. Um, and that's at once a sobering and empowering thought, I think, about how you can address um, what we're doing in this space. We've had um, about 1,300 approved comments <coughs> up on that site against some 128 posts. About 1,400 comments that um, the team, Mark, me and others have had to go through and knock out because they're actually just advertising spam that gets through the filter. But 10,000 auto-block comments 
that was speed. Now, what it gives you an idea about that even with an active post-moderation policy like we've got, there is a bit of work to do and some protection to do if you want to do useful things on blogs. And it takes some effort. Um, GovSpace itself is now getting some 40,000, over 40,000 visits a month. Now, um, what's interesting about that is we're getting about the same number of page views. Um, does that mean we've got a very high bounce rate and we've got a problem? Or does it mean that because people come to our site um, through a particular link, often through Twitter or something like that, see what they want and go away again, that that's not really a problem? It's an interesting issue and one that shows there's a lot to do in measuring online services or measuring what we're doing in social media to answer these questions. Because I don't think we know. I spoke to another audience um, a couple of weeks ago and it was an audience of a lot of local government people in Victoria. And they were saying, you know, you could see that they wanted information and they were hoping to see talk to experts. And as I said to them at the time, although you're going to hear, and indeed we will today about some of these things, a whole lot of um, information from people who seem like they are experts in this regard. One thing that links all of the people <coughs> who are working in this at the moment, that if they didn't go to Harvard, they weren't on Facebook six years ago, and, if, and they couldn't have been on Twitter six years ago either, because we're just coming up to the birthdays, the six birthdays of those sites. So although there's a lot being done and a lot of growth in this area over time, um, we are nowhere near yet at the sort of, this expert, you'd look at someone and say they're just the, you know, a genius in this area. I, I don't think that's there yet. Now there's some other statistics that you can look at on my um, brilliant artistic work there, but I might just move on to the more traditional areas of um, public servant um, discussions. Having said that, after those 421 days since the declaration of open government, what's actually been achieved as a consequence of social media in government? How many lives have we saved? How many houses have we built for homeless people? What else have we done in a realistic way using social media to address these things? Certainly we're out talking to people more and we're engaging in things a little more, but where are we actually going with this? This is the um, Gartner Hype Cycle. It's just been released. Um, I think I'll be able to put this up on um, the slides for this thing. I'm not sure yet. I have to ask my friends at Gartner to make sure that I can do it. Now, those of you who've seen a Hype Cycle before will know that what it talks about is the technology trigger starts and things start going up this Hype Cycle. They climb up and climb up as they're talked about, discussed, they're in the media and things like that. They hit the peak of inflated expectations where everyone thinks this is the wonderful new thing, it's got to be the go, and then they start falling down into the trough of disillusionment. And eventually, if they're not abandoned, they come up the slope of enlightenment um, and head off into the plateau of productivity. Um, I've talked to Gartner about there being a cliff of legacy just over here, um, where they then become the IT department's problem but they haven't adopted that yet. Now, one of the interesting things about this is many of the things we're talking about today are reaching the um, peak of inflated expectations. Some of them have gone further than that. Um, social media consulting is heading towards the trough of disillusionment. Um, is that surprising? Um, the, the, um, there's a range of things that are with social media monitors less than two years to be in the mainstream. So the ability to look and see what's going on. Reflects work being done by um, CSIRO, by um, Human Services, Centrelink, around these things, to look at those arrangements. But you can see there's a lot happening here at the moment that is sort of building things up. Now, how do I know that this is the case? Because I get invited to speak at a lot of these events, as some of you do as well. And I find our, we find ourselves speaking to each other um, a lot of the time, going over the same things, hearing the same stories. Now, the interesting thing about that is, are we actually progressing forward? And I'll leave that as something of an open question at the moment. This is another view of the same Gartner information. And what it shows is, that from on the left-hand axis, the effect or the benefit of things low to transformational, and on the... Um, the x-axis going from left to right, less than two years, two to five years, five to ten years, more than ten years. 
Now, um, high benefit in social media monitoring in less than two years. I think we're actually seeing that, right? I think we can respond as organisations, um, particularly in the public service, through monitoring media, um, uh, social media now in a much better way than we have able to be before. We can be on top of stories faster, answer questions faster, if we've got the staff deployed to do this. Um, you, you'll be able to look and see some of these other things over time, but the transformational things are away yet. They're a bit in the distance for some of this work. Not in the normal sort of conversation that people might have, but to actually change what we're doing in government, I think there's still some way to go. And that's not really surprising when you think about the speed at which technology uses things. Now, what happens after the engagement? Now, that's the wedding, the honeymoon, um, all the sorts of things that go on after that. Um, but where are we at this stage? If we, if we went through this engaged process with the task force, if we've then done something now, what are the sorts of things we're looking at? Now, you'll hear, I think, from a couple of people today around building the business case for doing this. Because we've got to get to the stage where we're no longer just talking to people about what wonderful tools they are. You know, I can do this on Twitter, I can do that on, on Facebook, you know, my iPad can access this. That discussion about tools, whilst exciting for those of us in IT or those of us in this particular space, is nowhere near as exciting for people who, whose real problem is balancing the budget. It's nowhere near as exciting for someone who's working out policy about immigration matters. It's nowhere near as exciting as it is about dealing with the fact that, that Australia is at war at the moment um, and has been for a considerable period of time. So we've got to get out of this sort of teasing about, you know, isn't this exciting, isn't this interesting, and get into the fact, how can we use it in the mainstream? What are the sort of effects that we can do in order to drive these things forward? And I think we're away, a little way away from that yet. So what can we, how will we know when we're actually at the right um, arrangement? And I think we'll know when we're on a winner um, as we go through this. Um, the story in Scotland that Romania was near law a couple of minutes ago. Um, uh, and surprisingly closer than you think. Um, first of all, we're going to know when we're on a winner when we don't go to conferences to hear about social media. Okay? And if you think the last time you went to a conference to hear about project management tools, Right? It's something that's mainstream in the work that we do now. Or well, the last time you went to a conference to hear about grammar and spelling. Right? They're the sorts of adoption of things that we don't need to do anymore because it's mainstream. Now, I am actually um, interested in this notion of automatically included in considerations because I find that that's actually happening now. I see cabinet submissions that people put up that talk about the social media strategy that will be used to support the policy or to support the submission. That's a very significant change. Right? If you're talking about going into the cabinet room and having the ministers having read a summary that says, we'll do this in social media, it means that they're engaged in what's going on. So I think we're getting there in that regard. Um, when we stop talking about the risk-averse nature of involving lawyers, that's when we'll know we're on the top of the game in this arrangement. When I don't have to make lists like this and work out acronyms or whatever one of these is called for, um, for um, presentations, that'll be a good thing too. Um, we're already seeing advertising based on social media. And I think um, if you look at the, what's a grew transfer or those sorts of things, or see what's occurring, we're starting to get that information. Now, I was offered a um, clout perk um, the other day that some of you might know about. So clout's a method of me measuring social media um, uh, effect or importance or something like that. I mean, Casey wrote it's rubbish. Um, but, and the reason is because it's got no idea of um, sentiment. So you can have a very high clout score and everyone can hate you. Um, so it's not really a good measure. There are other scores as well, but equally um, they start to address the wrong sort of things. But nevertheless, they do indicate that people can use this for advertising. 
They can think about how things get passed around. There's a lot of stuff, viral videos on YouTube, that are actually getting out more in terms of reflecting what's going on than you might actually think. And 